Is this 2022 BMW K1600 GTL the best touring bike made? Well, that's what we're going to talk about, but it's too damn hot and humid out here. Let's get into the studio. Whew, it's a little cooler in here than outside. Welcome to another Cruise Man's Motorcycle Review. Today, I'm talking about the 2022 BMW K1600 GTL. A BMW loaned me this bike to test and review, and over the past couple of weeks, I've put about 1,500 miles on the bike, 1,400 of which were highway miles riding the bike back from California to Texas. Now, to be clear, BMW is not sponsoring this video, but the video does have a sponsor, and that's Lidlocks. I know many of you are anxious for me to do a comparison of the GTL to the Goldwing, but that's going to have to be a separate video. So if you've not done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when my comparison video is released. Now, the K1600 GTL is one of four different K1600 models from BMW. There's a 1600 GT, sort of a sportier version of this bike, but with no top box. The 1600B and Grand America offer a more laid-back touring platform with floorboards positioned in a feet-forward location. However, all four models share the same drivetrain and many other characteristics. And this GTL weighs in at 789 pounds with a fuel capacity of 7 gallons. Premium fuel is recommended. The wheelbase is 67.3 inches, but to me it feels longer than that. And seat height is only 29.5 inches, but to me it feels taller than that. You definitely sit on top of this bike. And it does feel a tad top-heavy in low-speed maneuvering. The styling is very European, very BMW. It's aggressive, modern, but I think it's classy. The front end of the bike looks very sleek and sporty compared to the Kim Kardashian saddlebags and top box out back. Now, I don't completely understand all of BMW's configurations and option packages. That's why they have a website, so you can do all of that research on your own. But this particular bike came equipped with the U.S. Premium Package, which includes keyless ride, central locking system, shift assist pro, anti-theft alarm, LED auxiliary lights, and engine protection bars. However, I find it interesting that there's no tip-over protection provided for those saddlebags. Even a simple drop in a parking lot looks like it could be an expensive repair job. This bike also came with the Option 719 Mineral White Metallic Paint, and the paint job was super high quality. Now, while that trunk may look massive, it's actually fairly modest in capacity. I struggled to get a large HJC Cymax 2 helmet to fit inside. I, I could feel the lid touching the top of the helmet. You can forget fitting two helmets in there. The 49-liter trunk has very nice dampers that slowly open the lid and also prevent it from come crashing down unexpectedly. The top box is finished out nicely inside with felt-like surface, carpet, and an interior trunk light. Now, at 33 liters each, the saddlebags, or panniers if you prefer, are massive and will make you reconsider lane splitting with this bike. And the saddlebags can easily swallow a helmet for storage. Unfortunately, the saddlebag lids don't have any sort of damping. They just fall open, which is really unsettling the first time you do it. The only thing holding the lid in place is this somewhat, I don't know, flimsy looking nylon belt that's connected to a retracting mechanism. Now, I'm going to have to zonk BMW for not putting dampers on these saddlebag lids. I really do like, however, that BMW included these elastic retainer straps to hold your stuff when you open the lid. Another nice feature is that the panniers can also be easily removed to transport your belongings to a hotel room or just to give the bike a sportier, slimmer look. 
For smaller items, there are two cubbies, one on each side of the top case in front of the rider's legs. And BMW does include locks on all of the storage compartments, and on this GTL, which has the central locking system, all of those compartments can be locked or unlocked with the press of a button on the right hand control or on the key fob. I mentioned that I struggled to fit my HJC Cymax 2 into the top box on this K1600 GTL, and there was no way to fit two helmets. And when I'm on a road trip, I keep all the other gear in the top box and saddlebags, so there's really nowhere for the helmet to go. Now, many of you ride bikes that don't even have a top box or saddlebags. Where do you keep your helmet when you park your bike at a friend's house, or at a restaurant, or say at a bike event? Well, Lidlock's Helmet Locks offers a safe, secure, and simple solution. You can install the Lidlock's Helmet Locks on just about any motorcycle, like I did on this BMW K1600. Installation took less than 10 minutes. In fact, I installed lid locks on this bike in a hotel parking lot. Now, to lock up my helmet, I simply slip the helmet hanger through the D-ring on my helmet, insert it into the lid locks body, and I press that little lock button, and that helmet ain't going anywhere. Not until I unlock it with the provided key. So no matter what bike you ride, I encourage you to check out lidlocks.com today. And thank you, Lidlocks, for sponsoring this video. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into dynamic mode, which will give us, it's kind of like the sportiest mode, should give us better acceleration. Well, this thing is The GTL's power comes from this inline 1649cc six-cylinder engine producing 160 horsepower at 6750 RPM and 132 pound-feet of torque at 5250 RPM. Now the horsepower is the same as previous year models, but that power now comes on 1000 RPM sooner than it did before and the 132 pound-feet of torque is up slightly from previous year models. The engine has a bore of 72 millimeters and a stroke of 67.5 millimeters with a compression ratio of 12.2 to 1. As part of this premium package that this bike came equipped with, it has the Gear Shift Assist Pro, which offers speed shifting, allowing you to get all of that power through that super smooth shaft drive and to the rear wheel without the need for engaging the clutch during those shifts. The engine is mated to a six-speed transmission, and although neutral can be a little tricky to find, I found the transmission to be a perfect match for this engine. This is a road I'm very familiar with. I ride this road, uh, gosh, hundreds of times a year. So I know every little bump, every little dip, I will say the suspension is a little less forgiving. It's uh, it's definitely a sportier ride. It's very firm. Uh, you do tend to feel the bumps, and uh, it's uh, definitely bouncing around on me. The GTL is equipped with BMW's dual lever suspension up front with four and a half inches of travel, and a paralever suspension aluminum swing arm out back with 5.3 inches of travel. BMW's Dynamic ESA is their next generation of electronic suspension with fully automatic load compensation. As you add or remove weight from the bike, 
the suspension is adjusted automatically. My overall impression is that the suspension has a very sporty feel, bordering on stiff. In a round town riding, you're going to feel the bumps. But on the highway, the ride is very comfortable and planted. The only time things feel a little sketchy is when riding in strong winds or like say when a semi passes you on the highway. This bike can really get bounced around by the wind. And in low speed turning, like in parking lots, the bike feels a little top heavy. Okay, time for the braking test. There's nobody behind me. Yeah, this thing's got super good brakes too. That braking is accomplished with dual 320 millimeter front rotors, each equipped with a two piston caliper. In the back, there's a single 320 millimeter rotor with a dual piston caliper. BMW's ABS prevents the wheels from locking up during braking. The front and rear brakes are also linked so that when you apply the front brake lever, you're going to get some rear braking as well. However, pressing the rear brake pedal only activates the rear brake. My impression? The brakes on this bike are as good as you'll find on any modern heavy motorcycle and better than most. The front tire is a 120 over 70 ZR17 mounted to a 3.5 by 17 inch forged aluminum wheel. In back, it's a 190-55 R17 tire mounted to a 6 by 17 inch forged aluminum wheel. The most obvious upgrade to the 2022 K models is this new 10.25 inch color TFT display. The screen allows a navigation map to be displayed, eliminating the need for a standalone navigation unit. The display screen is equipped with an extremely tough anti-reflective glass cover, which I really like, much better than plastic. The display features Full HD resolution and 1920 by 720 pixels. And although it's not a touch screen, it's extremely functional and feature rich. And no matter how bright it is outside, you can easily see that TFT screen. The display offers two viewing modes full screen or split screen. Split screen allows several functional areas to be shown simultaneously, one of which can be a condensed navigation map. So after using the navigation for four days on the highway, all I can say is, meh, it's just okay. The K1600 no longer has an integrated satellite navigation system, Instead, they rely on the BMW Motorrad connected app running on your smartphone. So, no smartphone, no navigation. Your smartphone is paired to the bike through Bluetooth and Wi-Fi so that the bike can display the maps on the TFT screen. And you have to leave your phone on and you can't let it lock. I struggled with several common navigation functions but honestly, this topic should be handled in a completely separate video. My personal opinion, it's not a Garmin. One thing BMW engineers did get right was the storage cubby for your smartphone. A compartment just above the TFT screen pops up to reveal a tray where your phone can connect to a USB charging cable. Now, this tray is large enough to hold most smartphones. My iPhone 13 Pro with case fit perfectly, no problem. However, my friend Don's iPhone 13 Pro Max would only fit after he removed it from its case. Just another eighth of an inch of space and it would have fit. BMW has included a cooling fan to keep your phone from overheating during long rides while you're using navigation. Now, in several hundred plus degree days of riding, my phone never overheated once. And when you turn off the bike, the windshield retracts fully and prevents the phone cubby from opening for security. 
But to my surprise, there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto support on the K1600 models. Say what? The screen functions are controlled using the menu button and the multi-controller wheel. And this takes a little getting used to if you're not a BMW guy, but by the end of day three, I had it down pretty well. Some functions, like activating the heated grips, are buried in the menu system, and I mean buried. Now, one morning, when the outside temperature reached about 60 degrees, I was frantically looking for the heated grip button. But no, it's in the menu system, and you have to go into the settings submenus to find the heated grip settings. All of this required me taking my eyes off the road to figure it out. Sometimes it's just better to have a simple button or a switch. But thankfully, BMW does offer four programmable buttons on the left side of the fairing, and one of the features that can be programmed to those buttons is turning on and adjusting the level of the heated grips. That's the first thing I'd do. There's also an included power port for those with heated riding gear. One real letdown on the GTL was the audio system. My bike had no rear speakers, and I thought the front speakers sounded kind of tinny and weak. AM radio signals, even in the middle of Dallas, are very weak and filled with static. Now, I can only assume that this is an antenna issue or a lack thereof. And while every new BMW also comes equipped with integrated XM radio and a complimentary one-year XM radio subscription, my XM signal continually would drop in and out during my four-day ride. Now, as for the onboard computer functions, which are accessible through the TFT screen, those are second to none. This bike is packed with trip monitoring functions that can be viewed on the split screen or in their own individual screens through the My Vehicle menu. Tire pressure, fuel range, coolant temperature, voltage, and much, much more. Really nice job. The seat on this Option 719 equipped GTL was comfortable. However, at six foot two inches tall, I felt a little cramped. I believe BMW may offer a taller seat option, which would probably help give a little additional legroom. I think if you're any taller than me, you may want to look into that taller seat, or maybe test ride the Grand America, which has the forward-mounted foot footboards, uh, you know, just for more legroom. The handlebars were perfectly positioned, and all of the hand controls are within the easy reach. The electronically adjustable windscreen needed about two more inches to keep my head from bouncing around in the wind, but should be adequate for anyone six feet tall or under. But I did find it kind of odd that the windshield is mounted to this structure that prevents access to the back of the shield for cleaning. There's enough space between the structure and the windshield for dust and water and debris but not for a rag to clean it. Now, I posted this question on one of the BMW Facebook groups, and some owners you know, suggested using compressed air or a blow dryer, while others actually suggested removing the windshield periodically so you can clean the back of it. Seriously? You expect me to disassemble the bike just to clean it. The included cruise control worked very well, however, you might be disappointed to learn that these bikes do not come with adaptive cruise control. Now, I was a little surprised by that given all the attention to tech. There are air deflectors that swing out from the fairing to direct more air onto the rider, and they are effective. However, in my case, they just caused more helmet buffeting, so I ended up just leaving them closed the whole time. The rear view mirrors are large and perfectly positioned, and there's even a small blind spot mirror kind of built into the edge of each mirror, which is a really nice touch. On the highway, the bike is rock solid and the engine is super smooth and quiet. There's no noticeable vibration coming through the hand grips or the foot pegs. Now the GTL is equipped with a reverse function. 
but I couldn't really get it to work on my bike. I mean, I followed the instructions to the T. I read the manual twice. I put the bike in neutral. I pressed the R button. I got the R light on the TFT screen to show up, and then I pressed the starter button. You know that sound you get when you drop a fork into your garbage disposal? Well, that's the sound it makes. It's pretty unsettling. I was afraid I was going to damage something, so I just quit using it. I'm sure it may be something I'm doing wrong, but honestly, I shouldn't be able to do anything wrong. Overall, however, I think this is a very comfortable touring bike. I did 1,400 miles in four days, and even fighting 20 mile an hour winds and 100 plus degree temperatures, I never felt like the GTL was the source of my discomfort. Now, new for 2022 is full LED lighting. The standard turning adaptive headlight function features a low beam LED headlight which turns into the curve according to your lean angle. In addition, the entire headlight unit can tilt up or down plus or minus 2 degrees during acceleration or braking. So BMW engineers really invested heavily in making sure the bike lights up the road ahead. I feel like the LED lights worked very well. When the ignition switch is turned on, a welcome light function is activated. The headlight and rear light remain on for a short time and then fade into kind of a waiting state before the engine starts. And when you switch off the ignition, the front and rear lights are also automatically activated briefly for what BMW refers to as a goodbye function which illuminates the area around the motorcycle. Interesting, with all this attention to LED lights, none of the switch gear is backlit. So when you're riding at night, you might find yourself fumbling to find the menu switch or the reverse button, etc. And for a touring motorcycle at this price point, optioned out like mine was, I really think BMW should have included a brake light on that top box lid. One of the first things I would add to the bike is an aftermarket trunk brake light, preferably one with a modulating function. But at over $30,000, I don't think I should have to. So this is the part of the review where I score the motorcycle on a scale of 1 to 5 in 8 different categories, with 5 being the best score and 1 being the worst. For styling, I'd give the bike a 4 out of 5. In spite of its fat ass, it's a damn good looking bike. In the area of performance, I'm giving it 4.5 out of 5. This engine is a beast, and with that optional Gear Shift Assist Pro, this bike really rips. You're not going to want for more power with this engine. As for comfort, I can only give the K1600 GTL a score of 3.5 out of 5. Now the seat is comfortable, but I felt a little cramped, and it needs more windshield for me at 6 foot 2. Taller riders might want to consider the Grand America. When it comes to handling, I'd say the bike gets about a 4.3 out of 5. That dynamic ESA gave me a somewhat stiff but a comfortable ride. The bike should do great on the tail of the dragon or any twisty roads. The only negative is how it handles in the wind. As far as technology, I'm sorry to say I can only give this GTL a 3.8 out of 5. Sure, it has this great TFT screen. It's the best I've seen on any motorcycle. And the onboard computer functions are seemingly limitless. But there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, no adaptive cruise control, abysmal radio reception, no built-in satellite navigation, and Homelink is not even offered as an option. You're telling me that I have to Velcro a garage door opener to my $30,000 BMW? When it comes to maintenance, I'm rating this bike based on how difficult I think it would be for an owner to perform their own maintenance, with five being super simple and one being a complete nightmare. Now, I'm going to give the GTL three out of five. 
Things like oil and filter changes, brake pads, fluids should be pretty straightforward. However, when it comes to checking valve clearances, I think most owners are probably going to want to visit their expensive local BMW dealer. When it comes to value, I'm rating what you get for what you spend. And this 2022 K1600 GTL, as it sits right here, is priced at $31,790, including more than $4,200 in options. This is an expensive motorcycle for sure, but you're getting a lot of bike for the money. So I'm giving it a rating of 4 out of 5. For a long-distance touring bike with an emphasis on performance, you should at least consider the K1600. And finally, my overall rating, which is an indication of how much I personally like the motorcycle. I'm giving this bike a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed riding the GTL, and if I were 15 years younger, it would probably get a 4.5 out of 5. This bike is for the performance-oriented rider, and that's what you expect from a BMW after all, isn't it? So that's my review of the 2022 BMW K1600 GTL. If you have any questions or comments about my time on the K1600, please do not hesitate to put them in the comments section down below. And don't forget to watch for my upcoming comparison of this K1600 GTL to my 2018 Honda Goldwing. Until then, remember, ride often, but always ride safe.